I would have much preferred not to be making this video today, but um, I like to sort of come clean and be honest, and uh, I'm not Mr. Perfect. Things do go wrong, can go wrong, and in this case have gone wrong. And uh, this is regarding a Royal Enfield 500 bullet engine I recently uh, stripped and rebuilt. And part of the work involved uh, truing the crank to reduce the runout figures. And I put it all back together and I was very, very happy with it. But I've got um, photographic and video footage showing the crank assembly held between centres in the lathe with the um, inner race of the drive side roller main bearing still present on the main shaft and the spacer that fits on after it and before the shaft fits through into the ball main bearing, the outer main bearing on the drive side and um, unfortunately I often uh, make a point of making sure that this is present when I put an engine back together and I know that I'd seen it on the main shaft of the crank while I was working on it so I was quite happy that it was there but somewhere in the excitement when I lay the uh, crank over on its side to hold it um, by a flywheel in the vise so that I can undo and then later do up the uh, crank pin locking nuts and the cheese headed screws that uh, screw in after them to make certain that they don't work undone while the crank was laid on its side obviously I would have had the drive side main shaft pointing downwards at one one stage and while I've worked on it and probably while I was using the impact driver to tighten the slot headed screw this little fellow here has worked its way along the main shaft and dropped off and I didn't realize that I obviously picked the crank up and then put it in the uh, drive side crank case and put the time inside crank case over it as well and clamp the cases together to check that the crank spun freely after truing it and it did and then obviously what I've done is I've separated the crank cases fitted the gasket and put them together and bolted them together but all the while unbeknownst to me this lovely little thing here had already slipped off the shaft where I was working on the crank down by the uh, bench and I was totally unaware of it put the engine together um, called the guy he came to collect the engine pay me and off he went and I'd actually moved on to start working on other things um, this in fact which has been waiting a long time and I was uh, going between where I've got this and the workbench up at the other end there and I got to the workbench and I just happened to look down and I saw this and you know when you get that horrible horrible sinking feeling well I got that I knew what it was I checked just in case it was off a BSA crank that I've also got on the bench there but uh, of course it wasn't I knew what it was and I checked it on this shaft here and I knew exactly where it had come from so I got in touch with the owner of the engine and thankfully he hadn't put it back in the bike so uh, he's bringing it back today and I'll be removing the head cylinder barrel and the drive side crank case fitting that and putting it all back together I haven't got to disturb the timing side of the engine so that's a bit of a bonus because uh, that'll save me a bit of time that that, that can stay as it is um, and this can go in but um, while we're looking at this stuff this is an old main shaft out of another engine I got here and while we're while we've got it I thought I'd sort of discuss a bit more about this and what it does and how it works because I have actually stripped some bullet engines where that has been missing surprise surprise um, but it really needs to be in there because what you've got is you've got uh, this part of the main shaft here the drive side main shaft is a press fit through the flywheel through the center of the flywheel and there's a keyway we've also got a key there um, obviously so that it doesn't just slip in the flywheel it's got to sort of be keyed and held firm to uh, obviously provide the drive to the clutch when the engine's running so it's very very important that this flange on the end of the main shaft is pulled tightly into the face of the flywheel and locked and held there now if this is missing you can put everything together 
and the engine will spin freely as it did in uh, the case of the one that's coming back here today. But if you uh, tighten, you got your fit through the flywheel, then through the bearings, the spacer which should be there, then you got uh, your engine sprocket, spacer, alternator rotor, and then finally the nut. And when you tighten the nut down, if you've got all the spacers there outboard of the drive side main bearings and you tighten this, you're going to try and pull the flywheel towards the drive side crankcase and it may even move over a bit and foul on it. Or you're going to put quite a bit of strain on the main bearings themselves, side loading them, which you don't want. So that's got to be in there. And um, it fits, as I say, between the two inner races of the drive side main bearings so that when you tighten the nut up on the end everything, the whole stack going from the alternator rotor, spacer, engine sprocket, um, ball main bearing, spacer, roller main bearing and then finally the shoulder of the flywheel itself and this are all pulled and held tightly in place and it greatly reduces the chances of that key shearing and I have actually had an engine here which had done that it had been running perfectly but it just stopped driving and I think the owner thought a chain had broken or something but it was actually he pulled in with the engine running and in gear the bike wouldn't move and it was because that key there had sheared and he needed a new drive side flywheel and obviously a key and the main shaft because the main shaft had spun in the flywheel so it's vitally important that that is in there it's also, as well as being rather unfortunate, at the same time it's rather lucky that I found this and also rather lucky that the owner doesn't live too far away and he's an understanding chap and he hadn't put the engine back in his bike. So I'm hoping to put everything right for him in the next few hours. He's coming back with the engine and uh, we'll get that in there and that'll sort it out. But uh, I'm going to make absolutely sure to the best of my abilities at least that this never happens to me again and uh, perhaps anyone watching this video who might end up doing a similar job might also be more aware of this and the possibility of it sliding off the main shaft when you're not looking because it really caught me on the blind side I really thought it was there until the engine had gone and I started doing something else and then I thought I saw, I saw this on the floor and I thought oh I know what you are Anyway, hopefully it's a lesson learned and um, we get it sorted within a few hours and then I can carry on with uh, other things that I've got waiting in the queue and uh, this time the engine that this is from really will be good to go after that's been put in there.